Rock stars! Eric Andreas, your Guitar Sage, here to show you and to talk to you about inversions and to show you the three most important inversions that you're ever going to use. How do I know this? Well, because I've been playing for like 35 years-ish and these three just keep coming up all the time. They've been doing this for several decades now and none of the other thousands of inversions that are possible keep coming up, but these three just keep coming up in all styles of music. So that's how I know that these are the three most important inversions that you're going to use. See, um, it's real world experience, all right? So let's talk about it. What is an inversion? So first off, an inversion is a chord, okay? A chord is three or more notes that we play at the same time. That's a loose definition, but basically three or more notes that you play at the same time, that makes a chord. So this, is a chord. It's not a pretty chord, but it's a chord. So is this. Those are chords. But they're not very pretty, but they are, but they're chords because it's three or more notes at a time, okay? So we got, we know what a chord is. Now an inversion is when we take a chord. Every chord has a low note and a high note, okay? So in this case here, if we play this C chord, it's a C on the low note and a high E on the top, the highest note, okay? So what an inversion says is instead of playing the letter name of the chord in the bass, which is what we do 99% of the time, well, it's 100% of the time when we're not playing an inversion, we play the letter name of the chord in the bass, meaning it's the very lowest note, okay? When we're not doing that, we're playing an inversion because we're taking some other note out of the chord and putting it into the bass. That's all an inversion is. It's a chord of the same makeup as the chord you were gonna play before, except you're taking a bass note from the chord and you're putting it into the bass. Okay, does that make sense? So, for instance, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you some examples here. Uh, so for instance, if we wanted to say, go from a G chord to an E minor chord via the D chord. Let's say we went G, D, E minor, and we'll go back, in fact, this sounds very similar to a phrase song that I taught here on YouTube. So if I wanted to do this more like the fray does it, I, instead of a D chord, I would play a D slash F sharp, okay? Now, why would I do this? Well, because if we analyze a D chord, it has a D, an A, and an F sharp in it. So what that means is if I just play a regular D chord, that's just a regular D chord, it has a D in the bass, and that's what we play normally. But if it's an inversion, we'd need to put either the A or the F sharp in it, some other note from the chord into the bass. So here we go. So here's a D chord. Here's a D with an A in the bass. Okay, it's a little bit richer sounding, a little bit fuller sounding. So a regular D with a D in the bass. D with an A in the bass. You can hear a difference here, right? Here's a D with an F sharp in the bass. And the way I'm doing that is I'm reaching my thumb around, using that little crease there in my finger to just barely grab that string and pull it close to the fretboard. The technique is something else. If, that, if you have a problem with that, don't complain to me. No, I'm joking. If you have a problem with that, yeah, get my free course, uh, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, the link's below. Do those dexterity exercises and you'll be doing this, okay? Trust me. All right, so uh, here's a D chord. A D with an F sharp is right there, E, F, F sharp, so I just bring my thumb over the top. Now instead of playing G, D, E minor, now we're gonna say G, D slash F sharp, E minor, D slash F sharp. So you hear this bass line going. And it just sounds more cohesive, you know? A lot of times the bass player will be playing this note and the guitar player will be playing the straight up G chord, D chord, E minor chord, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times when I'm 
you know, teaching saws here on YouTube and I'm saying, hey, play this inversion, it's because, usually because the bass player is doing that. Uh, but as we perceive it, as we, if we just took a song and we just assimilated it down or, or uh, uh, what's the word, uh, distilled it down, you know, we're going to have, um, it's going to be different than just what the guitar player is doing. So a lot of times I'll teach the whole song as we're hearing it, as opposed to just what the guitar player did. Because if you just heard that part, you might be like, well, that sounds really dull. And in fact, it is sometimes. We gotta add bass lines and do other things to it to make things sound really cool. So, um, so you're gonna find inversions like that, like that particular one, a lot. Let's talk about the um, G slash B. So here's a G chord. And if we were to play an inversion, we'd have to put something other than the G in the bass note, either the B or the D. That's what a G chord, G major is G, B, D. So some other note other than the G in the bass. And if it's a true inversion, it needs to be one of the notes from the chord. Now there's nothing saying that we couldn't play a G chord with an F sharp in the bass, you know, so like this. Or an F in the bass. That's just gonna sound really bad. But there's a reason why inversions work better than just like a typical chord that I'm talking about there, um, like a, what we call a slash chord. An inversion is a slash chord because as it's written, it would be like G slash B or C slash E. The first letter being the name of the chord and the second letter being the bass note that's played. So for instance, a uh, G chord is just a G. A G slash B means the B is in the bass. So, but check this out, we have a G on the lowest on the lowest string, that's our lowest pitch. So how are we gonna get a B to be the lowest pitch? Right, we'd have to come up here for the B. And that B is the same note as this. So why would we do this when we could do this? So this B is still the lowest note now if I don't play the G, and so now we have our G slash B chord. Right, so I've taken my first finger, I'm muting that sixth string right there so that I get this nice, B sound to start off. So this could just as well be a B minor chord or a G chord. Okay, so you can hear that bass very predominantly. The B in the bass very predominantly. Okay, now why would we use this G slash B chord? Well, to go from a C to an A minor is the most common move. So instead of going uh, C, G, A minor, G, C. What we can do is we can go C, G slash B, A minor, G slash B. And it's gonna sound a little bit more cohesive, so. right? Okay, so you use that one a lot. Those are the two that you're going to use like 90% of the time. 95% of the time. The other 4% of the time, the 1% the we're not talking about today, the other 4% is going to be uh, C inversions, okay? You won't see these as often, but you'll see them. So for instance, a C chord is made of a C, E, and G. So a regular C chord is C in the bass, right? But we could put a G in the bass or an E in the bass, and that too is going to create an inversion. So let's try this. So really, you don't need but just the basic fretboard knowledge. Everything that I teach in the free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30, if you know those first few videos there, you're gonna know how to do this. You don't need a lot of, hardly any music theory to do this. Uh, but you do need to know where the notes are. So if I wanted to play a C chord with a G in the bass, but I have to know where the G is, right? So E, F, F sharp, G. Well, there's a G, here's my C chord. So really, I just need to put my pinky there. Or better yet, I'm gonna put my third finger there and put my pinky where the, where the third finger was. So instead of this C chord, it's like that. So I can free up that third finger, I bring it up to the third fret of the sixth string, and now I get this sound. 
a C slash G. Here's a C chord, C slash G, a little bit fuller sounding. And I've used that in songs before. I, I play out with my wife. She's a magnificent songwriter here in Nashville, hit songwriter, and we've actually written a book together. It's not out yet, but any day now. Um, but nonetheless, uh, there's one particular song where I just l love the sound of that C chord with the G in there, and I use that a lot in, her, in this tune, particular tune that I play with her. Okay, so here's a C chord. C slash E was putting that low E in the bass. So instead of a regular C chord, I got the C slash E. Right? There you go, my friends. Super easy, right? Now, check this out. So an inversion is when we take some note out of the chord. Now, we can take any note and put it in the bass, and it still would be a slash chord. Say, like a D slash uh, E. A D slash E chord, you know? So you're not going to find that very often, but you could technically do that. The E is not in the chord, so hence it's not going to sound really great. Depend it depends on the, the context. But that would be a D slash E. You don't see that very often, but we still would call that a slash chord. It's not called an inversion because technically that note's not in the chord, so it can't be inverted. Make sense? Uh, but you're not going to run into those very often. It's really, typically, it's going 99% of the time it's going to be inversions, and it's going to be the ones that I showed you today, not... Uh, some other wacky ones. It just doesn't happen. All right, my friends. Hey, uh, let me know. Do you Are there inversions that you guys use that I didn't mention here today? Or is there something I missed? Leave your comments below. I would love to hear from you. Hit thumbs up and subscribe and all that good stuff. Did you know I'm on Facebook and Twitter and those fun places where the kids hang out? I, do, I am. I do. And I answer a lot of questions there as well. Um, YourGuitarStage.com slash live. If you only want to win thousands of dollars worth of guitars, gear, uh, lessons, and everything every single month, then go there and watch my live broadcasts. And I've got a, a free course for you uh, that it's I painstakingly created. It's the top 30 lessons that I teach all my students here in Nashville. So if you came to visit me here and you're like, Eric, I'd really want some one-on-one -on -one lessons with you, it'd be something out of this first 30, unless you had something real specific that you wanted to talk about. But here, I'm giving it to you for free instead of you paying like 900 bucks to come see me in about 30 weeks. So hit that link below, yourguitarstage.com slash 30 if you want to learn how to play guitar with no BS, step-by-step, can't-fail method. Do it. All right, my friends, please let me know how I can help you. As always, be kind to all beings. Don't trust the man. Practice your guitar. See you in the next video.